vitamin D levels had about three times more disease activity than the children with the higher levels. It's just, it's just tragic. All right, folks. 5,000 units a day. And children, 1,000 units for every 25 pounds of body, weight. body weight. I was going to ask you next. Yeah. What would the child... All right, let's do that slowly. 1,000 units per day. If your child weighs 50 pounds, 2,000 units per day. If right. child weighs 100 pounds, 125 pounds, 5,000. Okay. Right. 25 pounds per body weight, 1,000 units per per day. Right. Now, if a child is, is an infant, obviously, how would this be best introduced into that child's diet? Well, it, there's a, you, you can buy, buy vitamin D in a powder in a capsule, which you can open up. Uh, all the health food stores now uh, sell uh, drops, vitamin D drops. Uh, ah. uh, uh, Carlson, again, I don't have any interest in them in their financially, but they make a good product called D-Drops. Uh, for example, they have a 400-unit, 1,000-unit, and 2,000-unit drop. Each drop contains either 400, 1,000, or 2,000 units. And a nursing mother, for example, can put the 400-unit drop on her nipple, and the ba- it tastes very good, and the baby will just consume it with, oh, her, with her breast milk. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. All right. Smart stuff. With Dr. John Cannell, and we'll continue. VitaminDCouncil.org. VitaminDCouncil.org. Lots of information there. Uh, you can get a, a newsletter, free vitamin D newsletter. Um, how actively involved with these people are you? Uh, I'm the president and founder. Uh, we've been at it uh, about seven years now, Good about eight years, years actually. Uh, you know, what's happening is there's a, just an explosion of information. There's uh, the uh, Institute of Medicine's Food and Nutrition Board has been reconvened. Um, the 1997 recommendations are being now reconsidered, and they're going to be increased. No one knows, uh, you know, how much they're going to increase. You know how bureaucracies work, uh, but oh, yeah. it'll be a, it'll be a significant improvement. But it won't be enough. But it'll be closer than it is now. What is the current um, RDA? There isn't an RDA for vitamin D. An RDA implies that you, that the that the science is so well known that you can specifically say this is how much is needed. There's only what's called an adequate intake, which is a lower standard of proof. And in 1997, they said, well, we don't know what else vitamin D does. It, it seems to help rickets and osteomalacia, and this is how much you need to prevent that. But we don't know about these other things. And so uh, they left themselves with the loophole. Now we're learning about these other things. Uh, um, and uh, um, really, uh, to be safe, what you need to do is have a blood test called a 25-hydroxy vitamin D. Uh, the problem is that uh, up to 30% of doctors will order the wrong blood test. Uh, they order a 125-hydroxy uh, vitamin D instead of a 25, and the 125 will tell you nothing about your vitamin D status. In fact, the 125 is often elevated in vitamin D deficiency. So the key is to have a 25-hydroxy vitamin D and get your level above 50 nanograms per milliliter. That's the key. 5,000 units a day will do that for 95% of adults. Wow, all right. Okay, excellent. Now, in addition to vitamin D, anything that you would call complementary to it that we might want to be doing that uh, will yeah. help help its efficiency? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, vitamin D uh, needs uh, at least th- four known cofactors to work properly. Um, uh, that is, four cofactors that Americans are often deficient in. It needs about 10 or 15 cofactors, but Americans have... Okay. Plenty of things, except for magnesium. Magnesium deficiencies are, uh, uh, it, it's more likely that a listener, uh, average American, is more likely they're magnesium deficient than not. Oh, it's an epidemic. Uh, it, yes, uh, yeah. and the best way to get magnesium is simply to eat seeds and nuts. Uh, sunflower seeds, for example, are loaded with magnesium. Sesame seeds, uh, halva, uh, nuts, uh, especially tree nuts, and eat a handful of seeds and nuts a day. That's uh, one way to get the magnesium. The second is zinc, that is also contained in seeds. Uh, uh, the third is boron, which is also contained in fruits and vegetables. And seeds oh. have quite a bit. And the fifth, uh, I mean, the fourth is vitamin K, mm-hmm. and and you can the, the body conserves vitamin K. It doesn't you it doesn't run through it like it does vitamin D. It, it mm-hmm. recycles it. So green leafy vegetables, uh, you know, it, it's important for people who take supplements to understand. You just can't take a bunch of pills and then eat garbage. Yeah, for, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you can't do that. No. You, you have to eat some of the foods that, 
that the human genome consumed when it was evolving. And those include nuts, seeds, uh, fatty fish, green leafy vegetables. And if you do that, you'll get all the cofactors vitamin D needs. Interesting about the boron. Uh, yes. We're on a well here, and we have uh, actually elevated boron levels that are higher than average. And yes. the only caution that anyone ever has been able to come up with is it's not real good for some fruit-bearing trees. Other than that, it's great. Hmm. So I, I don't know. I, but, yeah. I, but as I you said, too much of anything is bad. So Right. All uh, things are poison. Nothing is without poison. Yeah, there you go. But it is. Uh, but high boron water is not good for fruit-bearing trees. That's, that's what I've heard. So... That's my contribution for tonight. <laughs> yeah. I went in the store yesterday and looked at and there's a bag of Epsom salts, which is magnesium sulfate, which they use to prevent women from going into premature labor. They use it to, to treat constipation. And on, in the box it said, great for vegetables and fruit. Sprinkle it on your fruit and vegetables. a great fertilizer. So it's unusual to find something in the pharmacy that you can use for so many different reasons. This is, again, magnesium sulfate? Yeah, Epsom salt. Epsom salt. And the other thing is you can soak your feet in it. Uh, have you ever heard of people getting hot oh, water sure. and soaking the feet in Epsom salt? Yeah. Well, it turns out the magnesium is absorbed through the skin, and it may be one of the reasons people feel better when they soak their feet in Epsom salts is the magnesium is absorbed. Yeah. I have a product that uh, is I've sold for uh, 12, 13, 14 years now. It's called Oxy-C. It was invented by uh, a German physician in the 20s, uh, Dr. Eugene Blass. It is uh, magnesium in a peroxide form. It's magnesium peroxide, and it, it's just done wonders for people. Yeah. So yeah, it, yeah magnesium, it's, it's amazing how many people are magnesium. In fact, if you look at the ten, most, uh, the, ten foods where, the ten most common foods where Americans get their magnesium, coffee, beer, and French fries are among the top three, uh, in that top ten. That, Magnesium is widely distributed in foods, but there's very little in most foods unless it's green leafy vegetables or seeds right. and nuts. Gardens, ladies and gentlemen, gardens. There you uh, go. Please. We've talked for years about gardens, and a lot of people did a garden this year. They're, they're harvesting it right now. Right. And it's, it's crucial. All right, now, get, go ahead. Get some Epsom salts from the pharmacy and sprinkle some on your tomatoes and your green beans. Interesting. Very good. All right. So, what's next for you? Where are you? Where is this going now? It's taking off, obviously, big yeah. time. Uh, well, this the second uh, set of papers that I've written is about autism. Um, I'm convinced, actually, the epidemic of autism, uh, the, the environmental trigger for autism, is gestational vitamin D deficiency, which uh, you know, 95 percent of of, uh, of uh, women are vitamin D deficiency during pregnancy. And Every time I see a pregnant woman, doctor, I, I just I almost cringe. Yeah. And if you see one in a supermarket, for my God, looking at what they're buying, yeah. you just you just yeah. feel I know. a pain. I know, and and you see these children. I don't know if you know children with autism, but it's a, it, it's it's more stressful to have a child with autism than it is to have a child with a fatal disease. Uh, that, that, because oh my. you don't know yeah. what's going to happen to the child. You you don't know if that child will ever be able to support themselves. What's going to happen to your child when you die? There's a new study coming out of the CDC that shows that the incidence of autism in, in uh, boys is about 1 in 90. I've seen is, one area in the country where it's 1 in 60-something. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just phenomenal. And it's grown right along with vitamin D deficiency. Okay, um, all right, we just have two minutes. Is there any suggestion that vitamin D therapeutically supplemented for autistic children can do anything to help them? Yes, I have a paper on it. Just, just Google autism and vitamin D and you'll come to either the paper I published or you'll come to our website. All children with autism should take a double what I recommended before, and that's uh, children with autism should take 2,000 units per, uh, per every 25 pounds of body weight. There, there are no randomized controlled trials or no, no uh, there, there are about seven going on right now, but but, but really the question is, should aut autistic children be vitamin D deficient? And the answer is no, they shouldn't. And because of the possibility of a treatment effect and the theoretical uh, likelihood of a treatment effect, one should make sure that children with autism have levels in the high normal range, which is 70, 80, 90 nanograms per milliliter. Mm -hmm. And they have enough mag magnesium and, and the things we've talked about. Right. Have have you seen uh, directly or anecdotally autism improved with? Uh, oh, absolutely. 
Okay. Oh, absolutely. It's right. just remarkable in some cases. The younger the child, the more likely there will be a treatment effect, uh, and it depends upon whether or not the autistic lesion was caused from either severe gestational vitamin D deficiency, in which case it's not fully reversible, but there are some children who...